Hello everyone, and welcome to a video by me, the Ranger George. Today I'm going to be talking about something that I think is a pretty interesting subject. I was thinking a lot recently about a game I played a long time ago, which I'm sure a lot of you guys will know if you know about Lord of the Rings, Middle Earth, that kind of thing. And it's a game called Shadow of Mordor, or the Middle Earth game series, I feel weird calling it that, but Middle Earth... Shadow of Mordor, Middle-earth, Shadow of War. And these were games I played a long time ago. I played them when they first came out because I've been a big fan of Tolkien since I was young. I mean, I used to watch the films, as I'm sure a lot of people did, that, like, fantasy, that kind of thing. I had the books read to me a bit when I was younger, that kind of thing. And I always found those games very confusing when I was a bit younger. I remember at that time I didn't know a lot about the lore of Middle-earth, and I just was like, okay, is this... Is this in the same world as the films, the books? What? What is this? I'm just going to enjoy it and play it for what it is and just see how it is. And I, I played the games. I played both of them. I remember playing Shadow of Mordor. I don't know how many times I played that game. Maybe two or three times. Played Shadow of War maybe twice, something like that. And I remember just thinking at the time, like, okay, that was fine. It was not really that great, but it was fine. Okay, cool. And then I just was thinking recently, to be honest, I was talking to my brother, who we both love Lord of the Rings, that sort of thing, and we were just talking about it, and it was, <laughs> it's actually crazy how wrong the lore is in those games, and I just, I say wrong because it is wrong, it's, it's not Tolkien at all. It's essentially they've got the Lord of the Rings IP, and they've made a, their own story in it. But I think what I found interesting about those games is there was a lot of systems in those games just as a game. You can sort of review it as someone that likes Middle Earth and that kind of lore, and then you could say, okay, it's it's not. It's basically not. It just has the characters in. It's got a, it's got a pretty decent aesthetic in general for Middle Earth and that kind of thing, but it just has the characters there and that's it. But if you review it as a game, as a game series, I still think it's it's pretty good. It's pretty interesting just as a game. I love the kind of nemesis system, I just loved going around assassinating orcs, you know, you'd have fun with that, you'd have an orc that you'd meet, be like, oh, it's that guy, and when you're first starting the game and you're not very good and if one kills you, then that becomes like your nemesis eventually, and then you could import that into the Shadow of War game, and I thought that that was quite an interesting system to have like a kind of nemesis that you, that you fight with, and I love the idea of you create your own orc army, you have to do these big sieges, take control of these castles, and as you know, if you play Shadow of War, you can become a ringwraith in the end, which is interesting to fly the dragon and everything, but obviously, in regard to Middle-earth lore, it's, it's a complete mess. Shelob is not some, like, woman <laughs> that can just talk to you. It's, it's, it's just a complete mess. It has almost no resemblance to the actual lore at all. I mean, it's like, it's like they've got a general idea of the law and they just thought, oh, who cares, let's just make a game. But, to be honest, I mean, it's a lot better than that Gollum game they came out with, because, god, that, that game, I mean, I saw some stuff about that and that was a complete, complete mess. But, yeah, I was thinking about this game recently, and I was thinking about, you know, was it that bad? Was it that bad? I don't really know. I mean, I don't have access to playing games at the moment, and I was thinking back on it, I was like, would I like to play that game again? And I'm like, I don't know, you know. After I've done more and more about, like, Middle-earth lore, I feel that, when you learn about something more and more, it sort of makes you not be able to enjoy the thing. Like, I had this with The Witcher Season 1. Like, when The Witcher Netflix Season 1 came out, my honest opinion was I thought it was terrible. And then Season 2 was worse, and then I don't think I even watched Season 3. I didn't watch Season 3. It just got worse and worse. Season 2 was awful when I saw that. Season 1 was just like... It was like, to me, like, I could see the cracks in all of it. I could see that... It wasn't just that they, like, were messing up, it was a lot of other things. It was, it was the casting decisions with a lot of the characters. I mean, I think Henry Cavill was great, all of that. I'm not gonna get into a video about that, which I could talk about one day, but what I'm trying to say is I think if I didn't know anything about the Witcher's lore, maybe I just played the games, just skipped a bunch of the dialogue and just enjoyed that, then I might have been able to enjoy season one, but because I'd made videos about the Witcher for such a long time at that point when it came out and I'd been talking about it so much, it was like I could not get past how much they taken out, and I know a lot of people have that when they adapt things. But I, I think there's other things with The Witcher, not, they miss stories that are so central. And I know people even had that when the Lord of the Rings movies came out, you know, they took out Tom Bombadil, they took out actually so much like the sacking of the Shire, or the reckoning of the Shire. I mean, there was a lot of these things, but what I would say is at least with the Lord of the Rings films, they kept true to the, the general themes of what those films were about. Uh, what the books are about. I mean, there's a there's a quote I remember watching the behind the scenes where Peter Jackson says, "We want to adapt Tolkien's story. We don't want to make our own story." And that brings me back to Shadow of War and Shadow of um, Mordor. And I think that they didn't really. It's not that they didn't want to adapt it. I think they just didn't actually know how. They were just like, "We just like Middle Earth. 
let's just make a game in Middle Earth. That's fine. Who, why not? You know, and I think it was all right. I think it was an all right game. It was enjoyable enough for what it is. I don't think they, the great thing about the sort of the Shadow of Mordor, Shadow of uh, War games is that Tolkien is such an established thing already. It's, it was already, you know, the movies were massive. The books were massive. It's not like this game comes out and people are like, oh, that's what Middle Earth is. It's just like, oh, yeah, I kind of know that stuff. Yeah, maybe it, I don't think it was part of it or whatever, but it's it's there. Whereas I think with The Witcher, it's more sort of like, you know, the games were big, of course, and the books in certain parts of the world were big, but the show is really what let people know about it. And I think it's a shame that was the introduction for a lot of people, but it's, you know, an introduction is an introduction, right? But yeah, in regard to, I keep going off on The Witcher because I'm thinking about, I think, adaptions, adaptations, I think, adap I don't know, who cares? I'm thinking about that and it just gets me thinking about all that stuff, but I feel like Shadow of Mordor, Shadow of War were, yeah, pretty decent games. I like the nemesis system in those games, I think that was really interesting. I like the combat style in general. I know Talion was basically just Aragorn, Keller Brimbor being his kind of ghost friend was in an interesting idea. I wish that they'd done it in such a way that the consequences weren't as big as they turned out to be, because this idea that Keller Brimbor made another ring, he became a Nazgul, all this stuff, I think that was just too much. I think if they'd had like a very small self-contained story where Keller Brimbor was just with Talion and they were going and doing a couple things and it, it didn't have too big a consequences, it would have been something that I could be like, oh yeah, that, that could have happened, okay. It doesn't have to have happened, but it could have happened. And I think that that's what games like that should be trying to aim for. It shouldn't be like, we're gonna shape the world, we're gonna have these big like fights with Sauron, we're gonna give him all his like generals and stuff and we're gonna kill all of them. It's like, it makes it just too big of a thing and it means that it cannot fit into the established law, even just for headcanon for people. I think it just becomes too much. That's a big issue with that. But at least Shadow of Mordor, I feel, I feel didn't do it too badly. I mean, it, it wasn't it wasn't great, but at least they didn't have Shelob going around, you know? I just remember being confused a lot in those games. I enjoyed them for what they were, but I just remember so many instances where I was playing the game and I was like, what, what is happening? Like, why, why is there a ring? Why, Gollum's here? You know, that kind of thing. And you just, you don't understand. And then with the next game where it's like, okay, he's a Nazgul? Like, I thought Nazgul were like the nine mortal men. How is he now a Nazgul, you know? And there are just all these things that just don't quite add up with the actual lore. Shelob, I mean, that's the biggest offender in that instance. And yeah, I mean, there were good games though, I think, just as games, just as a pure game story. Okay, that's interesting. You have Keller Brimbo, they make a ring, they fight. He betrays him in the end, he dies, you know, his family, all that sort of stuff. It's like, okay, that's an interesting story. That's something you can play, you can enjoy. It's fun because it looks Lord of the Rings-esque. Okay, cool, fine. And I think that it's definitely not something I would consider true to Tolkien in any way, <laughs> and it's not something I would consider a proper Middle-earth property, but it's something I think that could just be quite fun to have a go with if you if you find that kind of thing interesting, you know? That's just my opinion. I mean, maybe this is what I'm, as I said, I'm scared about. Now I've done a lot more with Lord of the Rings, and I've been trying to learn about it because, you know, I'm writing my own book at the moment. I want to try and work out what sort of things people include, what sort of, like, what is a good thing, because I've talked about fantasy stuff for such a long time now, and I've just... I've read so much because of it, I really want to understand the sort of basis to all of it, which is Tolkien, I want to put in some of my own information, and I think that now I've read so much of Tolkien, and I've been trying to understand more and more about what his themes were, what his motivations were for all of it, if I play a game like Shadow of Mordor or Shadow of War, I'll just be like, oh, this is so, like, I can't believe that this is what happened, you know, that kind of thing, like, like that's how I feel with The Witcher a lot. I'm sort of concerned that's going to happen, you know, but I think that sometimes it is very important to just separate things in, in to a degree. You know, people like Lord of the Rings, they like that kind of feeling and brand. That game sort of has that in, to a degree. Just play it, enjoy it, move on, forget about it. And that's probably the most important thing. I think it becomes an issue, like for example with The Witcher Netflix, it became an issue for me when they started adding Witcher Netflix content into The Witcher 3. It's not, you know, because it's sort of like, Imagine you have something like Rings of Power, which I've never seen and I don't want to see because I've heard enough about that sort of show and I'm not interested in seeing something that, you know, it's essentially just complete like fan fiction, you know, I, I don't I don't need to see it. Like I played Shadow of Mordor maybe because I was a bit younger, but I'm older now and I'm not interested in seeing that, you know, I, I just want to enjoy the Lord of the Rings films. But let's say, you know, they got Shadow of Mordor or Rings of Power or whatever, and they're like, oh, this is popular, let's just start putting it into the Lord of the Rings movies, you know, by Peter Jackson, or let's just, like, change the books and put that in, something like that. I'd be like, 
I hate that, and that's how it felt for me when they started adding Witcher Netflix stuff to The Witcher 3. Even though it was like, content that you could sort of optionally add. But, I mean, the quest that they added was not optional, it was a good quest, but they add like, Witcher Netflix armor as canon to the game, so... It's, like, that's what I don't like. I don't like when people go back and change things that already have an established fan base, and then that becomes the new norm, you know? Because people are gonna buy The Witcher 3 now, they'll just play the latest version, and it'll have Netflix stuff in. And then, then they'll watch the show and think, oh yeah, this is, like, canon to this, and it's like... I just... For me, I'm not a big fan of that kind of, um, way of doing things. I think if you want to make new adaptations of things, if you want to make a new thing, that's fine. If you want to change the story a bit, it's fine. I mean, Tolkien wanted to create a mythology, so in a sense, all these new things, even if it's sort of completely off what he tried to do, it's it's sort of like an interpretation of that story and the mythology that he did. I mean, mythology for ages has been, you know, interpreted in different ways as it goes down. Generally, the themes are kept, though. So I think that's fine, as long as you keep that original thing and you say, this is the original, everything else is sort of adapted from that, and you you shouldn't start messing around with things that have big established fan bases, you know, because even companies start to do this, they buy an IP or the staff completely changes within the company, then they add this new stuff and it's like, yeah, this is canon now, and the people that watch it are like, who, you know, when you look at like The Witcher 3, like who made The Witcher 3? Is it the same people that are making The Witcher now? Is it the same people that added in the Netflix stuff? Yeah, it's the same company, but the people in that company, has it completely shifted and now they're adding stuff and you think, is that the original person that's adding it? Or is it like new people that are adding it, you know? And it becomes very complicated. So I think, generally my opinion is you should make something, leave it, move on. And that's why, you know, for me, I can watch the Lord of the Rings films and know they're not the Lord of the Rings books. And know that that's just Peter Jackson trying to interpret it, keep the themes in it, and fit it into three films, which I think he did a really good job of. And then you have that. The Hobbit is a bit more debatable. <laughs> I like The Hobbit, but I, uh, I can see there's a lot of problems with it, and it should have been like one film or maybe two. You have like The Witcher and all that, and then it's like they're changing the old thing. I think that you should just, ha like Lord of the Rings, you have the films. You have, obviously you have the books, that's the main thing, don't change it. Films, that's it, don't change it. Then you have like Shadow of Mordor or whatever, and you just think, okay, that's its own thing, it's using the IP, cool. It's not the books, it's not the, um, films. And I think it should be the same with, like, The Witcher, stuff like that. So yeah, I mean, basically I just wanted to make this kind of a retrospective on Shadow of Mordor, Shadow of War, adaptations in general, my feelings around it, and how I'm able to sort of play these games and not be so bogged down with thinking how bad this is for the lore. Because of course, you could make that argument for everything, well, it's just an adaptation, so who cares how badly they messed up the lore. And I think that I don't like that argument in general because you should try and keep to the law. But what I'm trying to say is that sometimes you join onto these things when you're naive and that naivety sort of stays because you get nostalgia, right? So for me, I've known about Lord of the Rings for a long time. I played the games. I thought, what is going on? I don't understand how this fits into the law, but it's a fun game. And for me, my opinion, it's a fun enough game. So I can just enjoy it as a fun game. But I will accept that it is not Middle Earth, like as you know, the fans really generally see it. And other people have different interpretations, but my interpretation is not Middle-earth. It's just using the IP. And I think it'd be great, you know, people should do that with the show, with every other thing, like Witch and Netflix show, that kind of thing, and just say, okay, like Rings of Power. It's not Middle-earth, it's their own show, they've just used the IP. And then if you enjoy that, that's up to you if you enjoy that. But to me, I don't, you know? So I can say the same with the games. I enjoy the games, it's using the Middle-earth IP, it's not Middle-earth, but you know what? I kind of enjoy it. Whereas, there are certain other things where it's like, it's so far from the lore, it's barely even Middle-earth, and also I don't like the story in general, I don't think it's written well, that kind of thing, and then you have your own opinion, right? So that's how I feel about the Shadow of Mordor, Shadow of War games, and just, um, that, that's what I think. I, I know it's not Middle-earth, but I have my own opinion, and I think it's a decent game, if you separate it from that. But I can understand people being annoyed, because you have these IPs, they have a story, and you should, generally, in my opinion, you should keep to it if you're adapting it, but the thing about Shadow of Mordor and Shadow of War is they're not adapting, like, a set story in Lord of the Rings. They're just kind of making their own in the world, and they're very clear about that. Whereas other things like The Witcher Netflix show or The Rings of Power, they're not adapting, like, their own story in the world, generally, and saying, look, this is completely separate from the books. They're saying, we are trying to adapt what was in the story, and then what they've come out with is just a complete mess, right? And that's where fans get annoyed, because it's annoying to have these people kind of lord down to you, like that they're the ones that have bought the IP, they're the ones that decide what's in it, that sort of thing. But they obviously don't know what they're doing, and they obviously have no interest in actually adapting it, and then it means that other people can't try and adapt it and have fun with it. 
Because that's the other thing, the Middle Earth games do not stop the films being made. Do not stop a TV show, although <laughs> I wish it had, being made. It's its own thing and it's its own medium and then the rights, you know, they, they've changed and then we got the Gollum game. <laughs> but I think that's a big issue and that's an issue I have. I'd love to see an actual Witcher show, I'd love to see an actual Lord of the Rings show. But the rights get bought, you have these people that like, try and convince people that this is actually what the author intended and this is like great. Look, we've got Sapkov Sapkovsky, I think I say his name, Sapkowski, Sapkowski. The Witcher writer on the board, he's he's all on it, and when he's actually not, <laughs> he was on for a little bit, and then they kind of lie about it, and that's that's what I dislike. It's when you try and convince people that this is actually the same as the book, or this is the book's story, and we've done our best. It's like you obviously haven't done your best, or if you have, you sh you should be in a different field of work. And look, I'm I'm not just getting into a big complaining thing. I'm just trying to let you guys know this is how I separate things. This is why I think there are different levels of adaptations. There are things where you use the IP, make a story, make it very clear it's not part of the IP, and then you have things where, you know, you actually adapt the direct story and it's a complete mess from the original story, so you got to bear all that in mind. So if you want to play that game and you're interested in Middle Earth and just the feel, I'd recommend it, but I'd say, look, just be aware it's not really keeping in with the lore. They're, I think they're pretty clear about the fact that it's not really actually Lord of the Rings. And yeah, you can try and enjoy it just as a game with that aesthetic and just see how it is. But thanks for watching today's video, guys. I hope it's been an interesting one. I'd love to hear your thoughts about this and let me know what videos you would like to see in the future. That'd be very kind to hear what you guys would like to see. Thank you to the Patreon pledges. And I just want to say thank you to Lewis, MCV, and Mike West. And if anyone else wants to support, I'd really appreciate that. Link in the description. Join the Discord. Like the video. Follow me on X. All that stuff. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.